have you ever wanted to build an AM transmitter for the broadcast band or the amateur radio top band? Stick around, we'll go through what I'm doing for it. OK, so here we are. And on the bench in front of me, I have a picture. Now, this picture was sent to me by Doug Moslack, and it all refers to a diagram of a project that Don over at Restore Old Radios is working on. Now, he did a little project, and it was to build an AM transmitter for the broadcast band, fully tunable, bottom to top. Now, I thought, great idea, transistorized, simple, easy transmitter. Let's, let's give it a go, shall we? So anyway, I've been talking with Doug and also Bob via email. You all know Bob. And I've come up with a sort of similar design to both Doug and Bob. Now, I believe Bob's already built his and is working although he's saying that there's some quite low range on it. Doug, I'm not sure how far he's got with his, but I'm just starting and I've been doing some preparation and I've been working on this and that in the meantime and life gets in the way. You all know how that goes. So what I've got on here is the drawing that Doug sent me and this is the layout from Don's video and it's it shows his layout and, and which components are where. So Doug has been working on a schematic. So I'm going to move the drawing over to one side and it falls straight back down again. So Doug's been working on a schematic and all the materials. This is um, the circuit diagram. This is the parts list and everything looks fairly straightforward. So of course I thought, right, do I want to build it? on a board like this and I thought no I thought I'm gonna go old school I'm gonna build it breadboard style now I know Don did that in his video and his breadboard looks very neat and it's very pretty and it's one of these modern super duper plasticky ones and I thought yeah I could breadboard it and then I thought let's old school breadboard it and you'll see what I mean in a minute. So let's go through and just show you what I did to get to my breadboard. I took the schematic and I translated it into a linear layout. So from, from the raw schematic I just said right okay let's start at one end in this case the input which is where the audio comes in and draw the components in line as they connect. Now, this technique works for everything from transmitters, receivers, amplifiers, guitar amplifiers. This is effectively making a point-to-point -point wiring diagram of where things physically go. And when I say make things as they would physically go, you'll see very, very shortly if we go back to Doug's, and I'm going to try and put these in side by side. OK, so if we go back to Doug's diagram, you can quite easily see that uh, here he's marked audio input with a resistor. And then from that resistor, you have a capacitor going to ground and a capacitor going off to the base of that transistor. Well, in my diagram, you have a resistor. It goes with a capacitor to ground, then another capacitor, which goes to the base of the transistor here. And if you follow it on, at the base of that transistor is also a resistor, which is there, which goes to the collector, which again goes to here. Now I can see you saying, well, yep, OK, you just duplicated this. Well, yes, I did. And then I went one step further. I made the breadboard. As we go here, you've got the resistor, which goes into the capacitor. There's another capacitor. Resistor between the base and the collector of this transistor. That emitter goes to ground. And so on, all the way through the entire circuit. I've even put in the component values. 
I've marked on where the inductor goes and the other one, the uh, choke on the positive supply. I've marked in the negative rail here, which goes all the way along the positive rail. So all this needs really is wiring up. And this can be treated exactly the same as any of the simple Chinese kits that I've built on this channel in the past. It can be built the same as you would do on a breadboard itself, on, a, on one of the new modern plastic breadboards. The only difference is you have to join all the links together yourself. Now, what is this effectively? Well, this, this is a piece of, we call it MDF in the UK. Um, I think in the US the closest thing is... It's not particle board, that we call chipboard. I think masonite maybe, like a hard board. Um, it's made of compressed wood bits and then just stuck in a press with some glue in the middle and it turns it into a plank of wood. And these are copper coated nails. Now I would have used proper copper nails, but you can't get them in the UK anymore. Uh, not without paying stupid money because copper is horrendously expensive. So what they do is they dip the nails in copper and call them copper coloured nail copper covered nails. So that's that's what I've done. Everywhere that something has to join, there's a nail. So where this resistor here joins onto the wires for the input, there's a nail. Where this resistor joins to this capacitor and this capacitor, there's a nail. And the whole point of this is so you solder directly to the nails. I've seen this done with drawing pins on cardboard and it works. It's just a matter of making sure you know your circuit layout and knocking the, the nails in, knocking the pins in. And I make it easier for myself and also for this demonstration by marking on the components rather than just leaving them on a piece of paper by actually physically marking the components on. It's all done in pencil. So if you make a mistake, you rub it out and you write it on again and you make your corrections. And if you do make a mistake, you can take the nails out of the back of the board. Now here I started too far over and didn't leave enough spacing. So I thought, right, okay, I'm gonna start again. So we all get it wrong, but you can end up with a board that is ready to use. What I'm going to do is I will start by wiring up the very basic part, which is the earth line, the ground line. Now, you can use any wire you like. I just happen to have a roll of tinned copper wire, and I've had this for many, many years, and... I do have some others. You can get it on eBay still. It's nothing special. And yeah, it, it's just you know, wire that's been tinned with tin. It's not silver plated. It's nothing special. One trick with this, if I get the pliers, you can see that where it comes off the roll, it has some bends in it. If you just grip it and pull, it makes it perfectly straight and then what you can do is you can lay it around your first pin and I'm just going to twist it round at the bottom like that lay it across the bottom of all the other pins I'm going to cut it slightly longer so I don't have to mess with the rest of the roll Move that out of the way, then take the pliers. It's got a leg of something magnetized on. Just take the pliers and wind it round the last pin. Just needs one turn on each. And then what you can do is you can either lift it over like this over the alternate pins, just to put some more tension on it. Okay, and if it is then getting loose again, you just pull it tight. Or you can lay it straight. It's entirely up to yourselves how you do it. But then you can get 
any soldering iron and I recommend using quite a wide tip because you need to put a fair bit of heat into this. Just put in the heat against the nail, soldering on the nail like that. And if I do the other end, we know that wire isn't going anywhere. Because these are copper nails or the copper coating on them, it takes solder really easily. And if you want to hold it right against the board, you can do. Bearing in mind that obviously everything's going to be hot. And once it's flat like that in all the right places, you just go along the line. Soldering each one of these however you like. Now that one's jumped up because of the heat in the wire because it's expanded. When it contracts, it will shrink down in length again. And that is the ground line. It, it really is that simple. Now I can then cut off these ends because we don't need them. And I can do the same using the same technique for the positive line. Instead of just doing the overlapping, you can pull it tight there and then just do a single turn round each nail, like that. And again, you can push it down, make sure it's tight, and then just solder them on. Now, this particular method of using the loop is actually slightly more secure because you're getting more of a contact area with the nail. Now there are a couple of places on here where you need some interconnects. So having the extra bit of wire, um, one of them is here. I'm just gonna run a little loop round there. Push the wire down, little loop round the bottom. And again, just solder that in and make the interconnect there as it is. At this point, what else can I do apart from now start putting components on the board? Why do they call this breadboarding? Well, in the old days, your piece of wood you used were your mother's breadboard. You used to steal her breadboard and... Uh, knocking in nails and then she'd come at you with a leather belt and say you've stolen my breadboard again give us it back we need to cut the sandwiches so that's why it's breadboarding so i'm going to dig out the components and i'm going to populate the board and we'll come back to you once that's done we are at the point now where all the components except the transistors and the inductor is soldered to the board and I thought I'd go through a little bit about transistors. Um, I'm not going to go into the technical explanations. Don't panic. When you get a transistor, this is what we're going to be using. These are the 2N3904 transistors. They're a general purpose transistor. I could give you all the technical specs. I could blind you with science. I could show you all the data on them, but I'm not going to because to be quite honest, there's no point. But what I will do is I will bring in the data sheet. Now, this is only page one of the data sheet. I haven't printed the rest off because for this purpose, it's all completely irrelevant. What we need to know is on this transistor, and as you can see, it's just a little three-legged device, what the leads are. Right, okay, so you can see that uh, the transistor has a flat side and a round side. 
Now, if I make this match the diagram by turning it this way and holding it like this, you can see that the leads are one, two and three with the flat side facing you. So we know lead number one is the emitter. Lead number two is the base and lead number three is the collector. And these are, you know, as, as standard E, B, C. One, two, three, E, B, C. Now, we know that the middle one is the base, so we've only got to get these the right way round. So, again, we know one is the emitter, base, collector. So, if we go to the circuit diagram to get these right, we know that on C1, which is this capacitor here, that has the base on it. We know that it has to go with the emitter, which is the one with the arrow on it, has to go to ground. So if we look, we've got emitter, base collector. So the emitter has to go to ground like that. The base goes to the capacitor and the collector goes to the supply voltage. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to sit this in place like this. And I'm just going to rest that under the lead there like that and just add it in with a blob of solder. So now hopefully I can hold this in place while I solder it on. So I'm just going to heat up the pin then just add the blob of solder to one lead and not keep it there too long because too much heat will damage transistors. So now that I've got one leg soldered, let's just make sure all the legs reach each of these pins. And that one does now. So I'm just going to add a blob of solder to that. And that's joined in. And again there. So that transistor is now in place and soldered on all three legs. And we just repeat the process for the others. Now this one needs a link to take it to the back of here. I've drawn this wrong. So what I will do is I'll make my drawing correct. I'm just going to take out that line there. I'm going to draw it in like that. So that one hasn't stuck, which means I just have to wrap it round. Not enough solder and heat. There we go, that's on there this time. And to do that, I can either see if I've got a long enough piece of lead, which I haven't, or I can get the wire back. And all I'm going to do with this, make a small J hook, like that, put that round the lead, just bend that one back as well. Add the solder. And that makes the mechanical connection. And then just put that one round there. Like that. Cut the wire. Move that. Yada, 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 yada. See, I can just witter on forever.
all we're left with to do now is the main tuning capacitor and the inductor. Right, we're getting ready for the home run really. And this is probably the most difficult part of the, the bills. Now, when I say difficult, it's, it's a case of having the right information and equipment to start with. Now, we're looking here on the diagram and also here. Both of these are inductors. Now, an inductor is effectively a coil of wire. The trouble with coils of wire is they can vary. And they vary because of the diameter of the coil, because of the spacing of the coil, because of what's inside the coil. So what this design calls for is inductance in microhenries rather than millihenries. Now, to get microhenries, you use less inductance. It's all dependent on the wire size and the material in the middle. Now it says here in the design notes that L1 and L2 are wound antiphase on a T50-43 ferrite coil. Now I actually have an issue with this because I don't believe this part is correct. Now looking at Don's video, he's also wound it in phase and not antiphase like his uh, documentation says. Here is my inductor. It's not wound on a T5043 coil because I didn't have one, but I did have something similar. So what I did was I wound on first of all 11 turns and measured the inductance. Now to do that you need to have an LC meter. Now some of these uh, transistor testers will actually test inductance for you and in this case I, I've got a separate meter because it's just a little bit better than using an all-purpose general thing. And to measure it because we're measuring two separate coils, I'm going to set it into the middle, which is here. And then I'm going to clip on to this wire. And as you see, I'm getting 163.4 microhenries. That's okay for that side. Let's just measure the other side. And I'm getting 164.3 on the other side as well. So. You can tell that this has got the same number of turns as this side on this coil. I could go for 180. It's not going to be that critical. Right, OK. So this is the entire board wired. And this is basically everything done. So you've got the three transistors in. We've got um, the capacitor wired in. The inductor is there, this little inductor is here choking it off. What I've done is I've actually sold the roll of uh, tin copper wire to the antenna socket and all I've got to do now is plug in the audio source. Now here is my little Chinese mp3 player. You've just got a coil of wire with a pair of clip leads on the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the negative connection there and the positive connection there. This thing is full of YouTube music that we're allowed to use. So now what I'm going to do is I've actually set up the pilot radio that I fixed. That's still on the table. Um, I've set that up and I'm going to turn it on and Hopefully, we'll be able to find the signal. So you'll see me walking to the back. And I shall just turn the volume up. Right, 
there we go. Power on. This is the And let's just go and tune that radio in. So as you can see, it is transmitting to that radio and just to prove it we've now tuned away Obviously this is being affected by my fingers as you can see. But the transmitter is working. Just trying to get the uh, the tuning a little bit better now. The oscillator is not as stable as I would like. Um, I should only be able to get the signal in one place on the capacitor. But I'm getting it there. So uh... Let's just put that on pause and silence everything down. Thank you for watching. I hope you've taken something from this and you've actually enjoyed watching it. If you need any explanations, by all means, leave a comment and I'll get back to you. Uh, there should be enough pauses on the video for you to actually see where components are and how to lay things out. If there's enough demand, I shall put the drawings I made onto the internet. I shall save them and uh, they can be made downloaded, downloadable. I'll talk properly in a minute. They can be made downloadable. Uh, but generally, um, yeah, all, all, all credit for the design goes to Don over at uh, Restore Old Radios. Uh, I know I keep mentioning it, but, uh, you know, it is his design. I've just made a copy of his design on breadboard. With that, I shall say goodbye and hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to click like and subscribe and leave comments, 
if there's anything else that I can do, if there's anything you'd like to see. If you like these breadboard style projects, let me know and I shall do some more of them. Thanks very much. Bye for now.